<laughs> Look off your face. Welcome back. Travels with Tommy and Lori. This mug is seriously traveling. <laughs> we're, we're not traveling. Uh, we're going to be cooking a, a stuffed meatloaf. We had every intention wrap. of traveling, but it didn't work out that way. We got on the road. And where we were planning to go was closed and we couldn't do it so yeah like always so now we're gonna be cooking and so, i woke up from a nap i didn't get one Let's but um I, I'm, I'm a lady of leisure i hope i hope y'all like this um we did it and we're gonna smoke it on the smoker it's delicious it is delicious so um we're gonna get started here in just yeah. a second and getting this thing put together and get it on the smoker what are you making with it i'm making some uh, green beans which is not really hard to make green beans. And I'm gonna try- I'm gonna make good green beans. I'm going to attempt a jalapeno mac and cheese. So we're gonna see how that turns out. So let's give it a shot. <laughs> so I got this cheese for the mac and cheese. Okay. Wash me hands. All right, so I got about a pound and three quarter, yeah, almost two pounds of uh, ground, whatever it is, beef. Take the bowl, crack you an egg in there. Just start with one right now, put you about a tablespoon of uh, Worcestershire in there. Quick oats. I'm gonna steal a little bit of this cheese. And now we mix. Get it all mixed in there good. As much as you buy and use Ingles products, they should sponsor you. <laughs> well, I don't have to wear my mask in there. How about that? Must be good to be important. It is. Get it all mixed up nice and good here. So that's a little, a little too sticky. Your face is too sticky. <laughs> Man's place is in the kitchen. <laughs> well. Why you got them shoes on? I can make a good meatloaf. He does make the best meatloaf. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Rinse my hands off just a little bit. You just put enough quick oats in here to uh, to give it the consistency that you want it. Or it's a loaf. And trust me. You're not going to miss the ketchup. It's a sin to put ketchup on a meatloaf anymore. Hey, now, hang on. No. <laughs> All right, now, I don't like ketchup normally, but I like it on a meatloaf, and I like it on tater tots. Fresh, hot tater tots. But I don't miss the ketchup in his meatloaf, or on his meatloaf, because it really doesn't need anything. So, next... Let me get the other one out from underneath the sink. Good birthday. Two. <laughs> the next thing, we don't have to go walk through step by step. We're going to take a jalapeno, dice it up, 
And uh, I'm going to grate a little bit of this cheese just to put in this mixture here also. What is that cheese? Pepper Jack. Also Laura Lynn brand. Yes. Watch carefully. I'm watching carefully. Are you watching carefully? I was going to be on top shift, but I kind of already have a job. <laughs> Okay, well, A, you have to actually be a legit chef to be on top chef. I am, huh? No, no, no. I mean, you actually have to be credentialed as a chef. I am. Stop it. Get some help. Remember, don't stick your fingers in your eyes or your nose. Wash your hands before you pee. Time this is over, we're probably going to be really funny. <laughs> or really not funny. I just don't want, you know, when you uh, stuff it, you don't want to have big old pieces of jalapeno in there. You know, where it's just all you can taste. Tommy's meatloaf has been a work in progress over the last several years. And I think he has finally perfected it. I try. What you looking for? I'll find it. Probably not if you don't tell me because I put everything away. Greater. It's in that drawer. Literally. Oh, I found it. Told you. <laughs> so, as promised. Grade some of that in there. Alright. Getting my beer. Big uh, countertop we got here. Yeah. Got there? Uh, what I had in the cabinet is some press and seal. Do you want to go ahead and have your uh, <clears throat> smoker start it? I got it set at 225. Um, I'm going to use cherry wood. I think it's going to be delicious. If anybody else has ever had luck with this stuff, let me know. You don't stick to anything. Except for what you don't want it to stick to. <clears throat> so you just want to press this thing out. Just asking, because I don't know. Would it be easier to use a rolling pin? Or no. Not? Did you see me get a rolling pin out? I was just asking. <laughs> the hard part is getting it pretty consistent. Because, you know, as you, as you cook it, yeah, you don't want big, thick parts. You want you want it kind of all the same. Look pretty good. Yep. It's pretty even. So now what you doing? I'm taking the uh, diced jalapenos and putting them onto the uh, Wendy's patty. <laughs> <clears throat> Hand 
man's going to sleep. Now you know how I filled it to Godstones. Yeah, okay, well, that was a, <laughs> that was a seven minute video. This, we're at 12 minutes and 12 seconds right now. So. Take your, um. Pepper Jack. Do you whatever this stuff is? I'm gonna have to wash my hands again. So you take your uh, cheese. And the goal is to take this and get it nice and cheesy. Might be the cheesiest. <clears throat> did I say I did say about the smoker, didn't I? Yep. Set it at uh, 225. And this is gonna take roughly about two to three hours at 225. It's gonna be really good. And it's a pretty easy um, little thing to throw together. Yeah, he just come up with this. We were doing um, bacon wrapped jalapenos one night, and we were like, "What if we did like a meatloaf that was a bacon wrapped jalapeno meatloaf?" Mm -hmm. So this was born. <clears throat> Why you keep clearing your throat? You got the Rona? <laughs> no, I don't have the Rona. So you just use your parchment, not pressing seal, paper. To get oh, so that's supposed to be parchment paper? Or something. <laughs> and just get it rolling. Look at that. Look how you do that. <laughs> so it's pressing sealing. Any other time it wouldn't stick. Close up them ends. You want to keep all that cheese in there. <laughs> oh shit, my finger was in the way. <laughs> Again? Yeah. Keep your fingers out of there. Can't help it. Alright, so. As you can see, we got cheese. Pepper jack cheese. Speckled with cheddar and pepper jack. Yep. It's like you might need a yeah, little going. maintenance there. Just saying. Good judging. So now, this shit don't sit in nothing but itself. <laughs> it won't sit in nothing else I've tried to use now. Oh, I gotta let this sit for about 15 minutes in the freezer. Then roll it up in your paper. <clears throat> See that? All right, we'll be back. All right, so you get your, your bacon open. I got the meatloaf out of the uh, freezer. Let it sit there about 15 minutes. 15, 20 minutes. Bacon. So, what we want to do get our bacon out here. How much bacon does that generally take? Um, it usually takes a pack. So it's a pound of bacon.
the counter we got here. And it don't have to be perfect. Yes, it does. Unless I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Should have done this for uh, Taco Tuesday since it's sort of Mexican themed. Now we're gonna do it for Taco Tuesday. I got an idea. What? Tacos. What? How original. Y'all do a bacon wrapped chicken. I call this, I call the bacon, the bacon band aid. Because the bacon seals in the moisture and it also prevents anything from leaking. Dang, Tommy, that looks darn professional. Well, I try, you know. Look at you go. Like a rhinestone cowboy. Like a rhinestone cowboy. Glenn Campbell. Gotta love him. All right. I thought knock the cheese over him. Well, I wouldn't love that. It's very satisfying to watch you do that. It's very methodical. <laughs> so there we go. So you just leave those little butt ends exposed? Yeah, it'd be fine. Most of your cheese is in the very middle. Yeah, some of it's going to, of course, expand that out. That looks really good, though. You did good. Well, thank you. Stupid lanyard's getting in my way. So, now you just take this out and set it just like you wrapped it because you got the wraps on top. You want to set it in your smoker. Um, I got a Smoky Mountain uh, smoker. Uh, it's just a vertical box smoker. Set it on top shell. Run it at about 225 about two two to three hours when i do it for about two hours i'll just take my thermometer and hit it somewhere in the middle because that's where most of your your thickness is going to be in the middle not on the ends so just hit it in the middle you just want to cook it to probably around 160 and get it off when you get it off let it rest once everything that's what she said <laughs> once everything's stiffens up <laughs> we'll take we'll bring it in here and we'll cut a piece off there and show you what it looks like on the inside so we're gonna start smoking my meat i mean this meat <laughs> all right we'll be back <laughs> one eternity later oh my god look at that meatloaf <laughs> it looks so it smells so good ain't that beautiful <laughs> Why are you doing the girl from Ipanina? <laughs> that that. Looks, yeah, that looks really good. You did good. All right, so now you need to let it sit for probably about 15 minutes. So let it cool down just a little bit. And uh, I got it up to about 165. Pulled it off. Look at that. It's so beautiful. Delicious. So now we're going to let it sit. We're going to start our um, mac and cheese uh, next. All right, we'll so, be back. So what I've done, I've chopped up two jalapenos, diced them, and two pieces of bacon. So all I'm going to do with that is I'm going to throw it in this pan brown my bacon off, put my jalapenos in there. I'm going to take some of the bacon out to just where I can sprinkle it on top, but most of the bacon and the jalapeno is going to go together into the uh, mac and cheese. So all I'm going to do is just cook this bacon. But you got to have bacon. 
So I'm gonna brown that off. Is there anything more glorious? Yeah, that meatloaf. Yeah. <laughs> that meatloaf is pretty spectacular. So I'll get this <clears throat> brown down, uh, cook it off a little bit. Take half of that, which is two pieces of bacon. Take half of that, set it to the side. Put your jalapenos in there. Get it all nice Split and Split them off. Purdy. And then uh, that, that part will actually go into the mac and cheese. And then the bacon that I set to the side will crumble right over the top of it. So once I get this all cooked down and the jalapenos into it, then I'll come back to you. All right. We'll be back. So I got two, two tablespoons of butter. And I got two tablespoons of uh, flour, all-purpose flour. Just whisk this together. This is going to make the cheese sauce. Just want to let y'all know, he tried to use a metal oh, whisk in my non-stick pan. What are you doing? Sorry, chef. Yeah, do me a favor. Yes, chef. Take that off. I fucking... So we're going to get this broke down on low. Don't burn the butter. Y'all see my little cow thing? <laughs> it's seen so so many better days. But my grandma got that for me that as thing a is twenty-five years old. She got it for me as a wedding present. That's all she could afford to get me. So, it's been broke so many times and I've glued it back. So, I got the pasta already boiled, but I didn't cook it all the way through. It smells so good. So, now... cup of milk. This is making the roux. Mm. Mix that around. If you ever made a gravy, this is kind of how you you get to your gravy part. So you want to mix that around so it's nice and blended. You want to let that kind of come up to a boil before you add your cheese. Yep. So in our thought process. <laughs> We're going to do a half a cup. Lord Jesus. Or a cup. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. What? what? That is a wet measuring cup. That's not oh, a dry. Does it matter? Yes. It don't matter. Yes, it does. Y'all, let us know in the comments. To use... So, I got sharp cheddar. Then mm. I'm going to use Kobe Jack. Do you use a dry measure... Oh. Two cups of cheese. That's how that's going to work out. Drunk cooking with Tommy. Looks pretty. So you want to bring this up to a simmer. Yeah. Slight bowl simmer. You gotta keep mixing this stuff around. I still have to do the green beans. It's not my fault. It's always your fault. I know, for real. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You better not be getting all that on my stove. You say anything on your stove? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I say a lot of shit on my stove. Yeah. That's almost perfect. I'm going to go with you on that. That looks pretty good. Almost perfect. What you going for? Garlic right. and onion powder. I mean, I don't know why you stopped when you had a good thing going. What's that? Onion powder. Oh, that smells good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, that would be perfect on a Philly. You're welcome. I gave Tommy my cheese sauce recipe. Mine looks better. <laughs> He's so competitive. I'm not a competitive person. I'm winning. So just tell me that don't make a... That's not going to make a good sauce for macaroni and cheese. Just, just say it. It's going to make a delicious sauce. Why would I lie? Hey, you know what that'd be good for, too? Mm -hmm. Our knockoff beef and cheddars. Man, yeah. Beautiful. <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> if I had a sexy saxophone. Soundtrack. <laughs> if your mac and cheese doesn't make that sound, are you? <laughs> Yeah, Dollar Tree. If your mac and cheese doesn't make that sound, are you even legit doing mac and cheese? And why would you ever stir it with a balloon whisk? <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. Apparently Chase just woke up and remembered where he was. Holy shit, that smells good. He loves mac and cheese. And Our yes. Little pasta water that we saved. About a start cup. Start off, start off. Which is hilarious because he used a dry measuring cup for the pasta water <laughs> and a wet measuring cup to for the cheese. Mm. Maybe just a little bit more. So it's probably about a half a cup of the pasta water in there. Oh, yeah. Mm. You do realize, though, since you didn't, like, go through the step-by-step... That people are going to make this and they're not going to realize so they get to a certain point that they need to reserve their pasta water. Reserve your pasta water. Oh, well, it's a little too late now. Tommy is not the best teacher. Jesus. All right, so. That's all you keep saying. Do you need to go to church? Wait on. Off the heat. Off the heat. All right, we'll be back. 
So once it cools down just a little bit, go ahead and take your, your jalapenos and your uh, bacon that you cook together and mix that in there. Look at that. Mmm. Get that mix in there really good. And then you take your little crumblies. Mix that on, or put that on top. Is your mouth watering yet? It smells really good. Beautiful. All right. So now for the green beans, which is nothing. Pretty really. simple. Two tablespoons of butter, some uh, garlic powder, just probably about a tablespoon garlic powder. Creole seasoning. Tell Which I'm not please. a I'm not a huge fan of because of the sodium content. Yeah, lightly on that. Red pepper flakes. About half, maybe a teaspoon. Get that all mixed around. I got that on low heat. That smells good too. Fresh garden green beans. Thank you, Ashley and Zach. It's our BFFLs that live down the road. What's the difference in a green bean and a pole bean? I don't know. I know I don't like those flat, like the Italian green beans. I don't like those. I, I don't think they have as good of a flavor. No, I was looking today when I was over there getting the uh, jalapenos, and they had green beans and pole beans. Then they had them other beans, the flat beans. Yeah, the, the Italian... I just don't like them. I don't like them. They have a bitter flavor to me. They're kind of bitter and they're sort of hairy. Have you? Have you? I mean, seriously. Have you noticed they're 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 just a little bit hairy. No, I don't. I don't. Yeah, they have like a fuzz. You know, I don't like peaches either because of that fuzz on them. And they have. Let me let me correct that. I don't like fresh peaches because I don't like the fuzz on them. And those, I'm sorry, dude. I, I mean, whatever. I but like whatever. No, please don't. I don't do it. Oh my those. god. <laughs> anyway, I don't like the the Italian be green beans. Oh, pole beans. Yeah. I don't like the Italian green beans because they have that fuzz on them, and that fuzz doesn't cook off. That's kind of like the canned green beans when they have the French cut. I'm like, I like, I I like don't, French I don't cut. Like that. French cut. I, I mean, I like if it's green, I like it. I don't yeah. have I don't have any problem with that except for the Italian green beans. They taste like Velcro. I mean, seriously, they do. They they're like bitter Velcro. We know how you are with licking carpet. Well, I you know I got out of that when I was like <laughs> I don't know five. So I used to have this thing since he brought it up. When I was little, yeah, I guess it was a texture thing. I don't know. My parents had this 1970s Naga hide couch, and I used to lick the couch because I liked the way it felt on my tongue. But it graduated. 
What? No, I'm not. <laughs> it graduated to... My dad had this corduroy jacket that had these suede sleeves. <laughs> or suede elbows. And I would get in the closet and I would lick the suede. Don't go in the closet. And he would Once get mad at in, me. And he out. knew it was me because the suede would be stiff when he went to go put his jacket on. You know, and he's like... Stop licking the sleeves of my jacket. You know, I that mean, is so weird. it is weird. I know. I don't know what it was, but anyway, whatever Thank it was, you had counseling. Whatever it, whatever it was, is gone now, and I have a horrible aversion to fuzzy things in my now mouth. You got a phobia. Yeah, I don't like like biting into a fresh peach and that has that peach fuzz on it. Ugh, oh, that's so gross. So the Italian green beans have the, kind of the same thing, I and it doesn't cook off, and I don't like it. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. So I avoid those. When I tell Tommy to buy green beans, if he brings home the Italian green beans, I'm like, why did you do this to me? Why do you hate me? But when you're in a grocery store, and they got green beans, they got pole beans, they got whatever kind of beans up there. I always look for the green beans because I like green beans. I like any kind of green vegetable except. But you know, fresh or, fresh out of the garden is better. Yes. These things still have texture to them. Mm -hmm. And they're all turning the same color. If you get them from the grocery store, some of them be a little yellow, some of them a little brown. They stay, these are going to stay the same color. The same texture. They smell really good. All right, well, we'll be back. That's our meatloaf. Go for the good, right? I don't know what could be bad. Mm. So good. Y'all, it's so good. That is delicious. It is you delicious. You can see the peppers and the cheese all the way around it. You got a nice smoke ring. You did good, Tommy. That's a meatloaf. That is a meatloaf. So I'll make our plates and... Um, we'll be back. Well, I hope y'all enjoy that. Um, <laughs> it was a long night. It was a yeah. lot of cooking. Yeah, if you, if you really got the time, this is a, a delicious meatloaf. It, it it will blow your mind. It will. It's really good. So definitely uh, take time one day and make this meatloaf. And we certainly do appreciate y'all coming along. Hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell Ding. so you get <laughs> notified when we post new videos. Thank y'all for coming along. Bye-bye. All right, y'all. Well, thanks for coming along again. I hope you enjoyed this cooking video. Uh, I said we don't put anything on Tommy's meatloaf, and normally we don't, but I had some homemade barbecue sauce left over that I'd made from when we did a uh, pulled pork for a pork shoulder last week, so we thought it might be a good addition. Turned out it was really, really, really good. I'll be happy to share that recipe. If anybody wants it, just comment, and I'll post it. But, um, 
Hope to see you next week. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to get notified when we upload videos. Bye-bye.